Hello, everybody. We are back. Yet another episode of Le Geek Tales. I have been struggling with my audio for the last hour. For some reason, even though there is not a single noise within this room, it sounds like a hurricane is going through. I've tried it with my mic. I've tried it without my mic. It's just been a huge struggle. Now I am not using my microphone. I've even tried different apps. I cannot, for the life of me, figure it out. It was working perfectly fine just the other day. So, this is my life. So I'm not as, as excited as I should be. But that will come in slowly and surely. It will seep through my bones as we talk about our glorious book of the day, which is Mr. Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. I am a huge, huge fan of Neil Gaiman. Not to say that all of his works are perfect, but he has a very distinctive, fun style. It is, I hesitate, hesitate to say, very British. Uh, he has a very dry sarcasm and humor, which really you can see percolating through all of his novels, whether it goes from American Gods to Stardust to Neverwhere itself. And for those who are sort of aware of his other works, you can really know he, he is really great at, I will call it mystery fantasy or even fairy tale fantasy, but not in the traditional old school sense, but more so in the fact of he is fantastic at retaining that mysterious aspect of what makes magic so interesting. For a lot of people, obviously, we love fireballs being shot and big explosions and boom boom bang bang and it's it's really great obviously when you get that sort of really powerful kind of magic but within his novels it's subtle it is just this deep part of the world where the magic just is and there's not that much explanation for how things function this is not the kind of book for the lovers of magic systems it is very much a low magic or just what i would like to call just deep magic it is just a part of the world that's what it is and there's never really much of an explanation for anything and this story starts off pretty simple pretty slow at first you follow this character richard mayhew as he is living in london and he's got you know everything going decently well for him he's got a girlfriend who is very well off and He's doing well at his job, and they're about to get engaged. And unfortunately, Mr. Richard runs into a young girl. He does not know who this young girl is, but she seems to be injured and bleeding upon the streets, and he helps her out. And unfortunately, this, this coming together with this other woman makes him fall out of the normal world. So within this book series, Neil Gaiman has created what's called London Below. So it's the, for the people who have fallen through the cracks. They can no longer really be seen by regular people. They still exist within the same world. But there's just this whole, you could say, magical realm existing parallel to ours. And the more deeper you are in it, the more normal people like us cannot see you. Nor see any of the magical things that are happening within that world. It's just kind of there alongside of us invisible to a degree and so Richard becomes a part of this world and as he tries to figure things out he ends up refinding this girl who he had helped and saved on the side of the street and he ends up going along with her for her journey and it really is more so about her it is her journey and her name is Dor and as her family has this ability to open up doors any door really they can even create doors to different places so she's sort of like a portal opener in a certain sense it's a it's, it's something that's supposed to be genetic to her family it's only her family as far as we can see in the story and Richard just goes along with her as she's trying to figure out who unfortunately killed her family and who is attempting to kill her and so they're on this journey to try to get help to try to figure things out and Richard's just tagging along for the ride and it's really great for that. That's what really makes it magical because there's nothing particularly special about Richard. I mean, besides the fact that for no explanation that they can figure out, he was able to see Dor. So 
generally speaking, as I said before, normal humans cannot see people from the London below, but yet he was able to see her right away. So there is that aspect, although it's never really delved into. But besides that, he's just this normal guy. He never really becomes some big hero. He has some moments where he's a little bit more brave, but overall, he's just this regular guy freaking out, <laughs> which is actually really refreshing because in a lot of novels, a lot of anime, a lot of stories, you know, the person from the regular world pops into the magical world and all of a sudden he just ends up being so, he ends up finding out he's got these gifts or abilities or this or that, something about him that really makes him special and Richard never has that. He's really just a perfect representation of a normal, kind guy who is just trying to figure things out, is freaking out, doesn't really know what he's doing, and he's got really nothing going for him other than that. And so it's interesting to see what a normal Joe Schmo, how he would react if he suddenly was thrust into this magical world. And the world of London below is confusing, it's chaotic, as I said before, Neil Gaiman is not someone who makes like a hard magic system with a lot of rules. There's just this confusion and you only see these little glimpses as you go along and it's incredibly dangerous. Practically everything within London below, the entire system is very, very individualistic. People can be murdered and just vanish out of nowhere for multiple reasons. And there are angels and gods and goddesses and people who are, I don't even call them magical per se, but they seem to have like biological conditions which can cause very real danger for other people around them. Some people have telepathic abilities. There are people who have telekinetic abilities, other people who are pyros. It's, it's really just other people can communicate with animals. And so it's, it's really got this whole breadth of sort of fae within it but that are intermingled with humanity in a sense that there's no separation really between the two so neil gaiman manages to take the, the london that everybody already knows and kind of bleed magic into it in every nook and cranny and it's beautiful and it's fun and it's exciting and it's confusing and you never really fully understand what is happening and what is really the the, what makes this world tick like where does it come from why does it exist you never find that out it's just it's there it's magic it does not get an explanation and it's really really fun when seen through the eyes of Richard who I mean he does get development for sure I know I don't want to say there are there is no character development but he really is the primary character uh, alongside Dor and you also have another character named the Marquis de Caraba Carabas Carabas something to that effect, who he journeys with, and also Hunter, who is uh, basically a, I want to call her a warrior, but in reality what she is is a hunter. She's like a professional hunter who also does bodyguarding as well. And so these four really just are the ones he's traveling with, and they're all kind of unique as side characters. Dora, again, has this magical ability, and she's sort of the central focus of the story in terms of everything that's been happening and everything that does happen to them is because of her. The Marquis de Caraba is someone who's known as sort of an information broker. He's a jack of all trades. He's very, very powerful in the sense of just his wit and his charm and his knowledge of the world. And so he's their guide. He is the one who's really just focusing them and keeping them from getting killed. And Hunter, of course, is the protection. And so you do get to know a little bit of their backstories and get a bit of understanding. But Richard is really the central focus of the story. And he's such a normal person, you think it would be boring, but it is very much not. His normalcy is what contrasts the strangeness and the craziness of the other characters and the rest of the world and his perception of how nuts these things are and how everyone just accepts them when it makes no sense is kind of like a really really cool way to finally uh, help us along as the readers to accept and acknowledge this crazy stuff because in a lot of ways as I said before a lot of novels that kind of thrust a normal person into a different world just kind of glosses over that a lot of the ways. The character just has to go with it. 
Richard never does, but he does figure things out. He does get better. He does improve, uh, but he, he never fully accepts that any of these things make sense. So that, that's really, I would have to say, the best part of this book is that world because there's so much history and lore and I, I would imagine that if you were someone from London or just someone who, uh, who knows the history of London and possibly Britain as well a lot better you would appreciate this novel even more because you can really really glimpse into what Neil is doing with how he's changing and using things in historical monuments for someone like me who's Canadian I don't get it as much but I can still fully appreciate that kind of mystery to like the closest big city to me would be Montreal and I could sort of imagine like what if these parts of Montreal there was this flip side world where there's all these things and there's people with abilities who control them and they're like the lords of the land and it would be a crazy cool thing and Neil does that really really well um, I, like I said before there's not really any kind of hard or fast magic in this there's little little things just beasts and creatures and angels and people who seem to have supernatural abilities more than not but there's no real magic per se i suppose the most magical of any of the abilities shown would be Dora's ability to like create doors into other realms and realities and places so that would probably be the most magical of the abilities the rest are more things i would consider more science fictiony sort of a little bit difficult as he's kind of straddling the line between science fiction and magic but at the end of the day that's really is what magic is magic is sort of a uh, it's no different than telekinesis in a certain sense only difference is that magic would be something much more complex and so that's it's it's, it's beyond our understanding of science at this moment so neil does a really good uh, job of kind of straddling the two in this book i definitely think that the I don't want to call them action scenes or even fighting scenes because there's only a few fights per se in the novel this is not an action book it does have some phenomenal pacing though like once he gets into London below Richard is just it's just one thing after another it's a non-stop journey they are going towards stuff they're running away uh there is death and there is violence and there is fighting but it's not a huge part but yet you never feel the lack of it it's always kind of keeping you rolling along so it feels like a lot more is happening than actually is in terms of bigger picture in terms of kind of gives you that sense of kind of like a battle would without there ever being a battle because there's just always that sense of danger happening all the time throughout the novel even if it's not the traditional danger of let's say someone coming out and stabbing you with a sword or something like that um, so that's always kind of there and alongside every bit of danger let's say happening within a moment there's always the implication that there's even more danger there's other things within london below that are far more dangerous and Neil manages to express that sometimes without even saying what they are, saying that Richard shouldn't even find out about it because it's better not because it would probably scare him too much. Uh, so there's that. It, it's really just this, this magic seeped world that permeates every level of every page of the novel. And Richard is just waltzing through it as this wide-eyed, innocent boy really trying to figure things out being protected by those around him and then slowly becoming a part of that world in little increments so you don't even realize it till at the end you're like ah oh, it's fantastic uh, so neil neil's his prose his sarcasm his wit just it's in every part of this book i enjoyed it in the graveyard book I enjoyed it in the American Gods, but I really feel that Neverwhere is where he shines. I, for me, Neverwhere is his best best novel he's ever written. To be fair, I haven't read all of his books yet, so it's possible I could be wrong. The Sandman is lauded as one of his greatest works. I have not read The Sandman yet. Shame on me, but I will. So I would highly, highly recommend checking out this novel if you love mystery, if you love 
fey if you just love mysticism and spirituality and religion and just everything mushed together all the different kind of magical systems and ways of looking at a ma magic in general just mushed into one book with a fast pacing interesting characters and uh hopefully actually a book too even though it's been many many years since neverwhere came out neil gaiman supposedly does want to do a sequel which is actually very rare for him he's done almost no sequels for most of his books he's quite adamant against doing sequels in general uh, i think even books that would be considered sequels many times they're not direct sequels sometimes they're just set within the same world but i've heard he does want to make a direct sequel to this one to re-explore richard's life so that's really fun there is a, a fun little story about the Marquis de Caraba that he did. I wouldn't call it a novella. It's really just like a short, fun story that he did on the side. So that's included in some of the paperback novels. So mine, it doesn't really say what which one it is, but basically this one right here has the short story built into it. And I'm sure you could find it online as well. So check it out. I... Highly, highly recommend it as a standalone novel. It's fantastic. I tend to, to kind of go more towards series, but I've reread Neverwhere, I think at least seven times now, and it never stops being enjoyable. as something just really pleasant that you finish it and it makes you feel good once you finish it. Not, not even sad, just it's just this nice feeling of satisfaction because the novel does exactly what it's meant to do. And just... You want to explore more, but it doesn't make you depressed or something like some books do. So, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite books. So check it out. Neil Gaiman, never were. And uh, if you like it, let me know. Comment below, like, subscribe, and uh, check out my website, geektales.ca, if you want to check out other things. I do have writings and other stuff that I share over there. Later.